Hello everyone, welcome to my Unity 2D platforming tutorial on how to make the original Super Mario Brothers for the NES. Um, you may wonder why make Super Mario Brothers and my answer is quite simple. Um, in order to get good in creating video games, you have to start at some point. Just like you learning my tutorials right now, I'm also learning how to do more things in Unity and the best way to learn how to make games in Unity is starting from the basics, which to me I see it, which is Mario, which uh, is one of the games that started platforming. And to me, it's a good way to study how to make it. And plus, since everyone knows Mario, it's the easiest example I can think of. Now, before I start, I'm gonna show you guys resources that you will want to download for this tutorial. Okay. So the first thing that you would want is the sprites. We're going to be using the original Super Mario Brothers sprites. Since we're going to emulate the original game as close as possible, you go to spriteresourcecom nest super mario brothers. I'll put the link in the description. And you want to download Mario and Luigi and World 1-1. And also items and bricks. So you want to get the items and bricks and the tile sets because you're going to need that the best way to do always to get unity now and you have to sign up for an account there's different levels personal professional plus and price well i said it wrong it's actually personal plus pro and enterprise um you want to download the free one it well it has everything you need really it's the, basically the whole engine with a couple features not added um but if you're really serious in the game making like you want to go professional, I would recommend getting the Plus Pro or Enterprise. Another thing I want to show is that Unity 2D on Reddit, They this is a very helpful website if you have any problems. I know when I'm, that I'm still learning, I still go to this website to, to, uh, to have any questions that I need answering. So this is a great place. There's also Discord which is the Game Development League. Um, if you go to the Unity development page, there are some really awesome people here that will help you and they won't let you down. I know when I had problems with learning to d -sharp program, which scripting, you'll, you'll need it. You're gonna, this is gonna be part of the tutorial. Um, it's necessary. So those are, those are the things I would recommend you go to in case you have any problems or if I'm not able to answer. Because I can guarantee you the people here at either Discord or Unity Duty will help you answer your question. Okay, so with that in mind, what am I teaching you today? Well, the first thing I'm going to teach you is how to import all your assets for the game. For example, the sprites and the tile sets and also how to do animations, and how to C-sharp a player movement script, and also how to organize your files. So, with all the talking done, let's begin. So the first thing you need to do is press new. So press a new script. We're gonna make it in 2D since it's a 2D game, and if there's anyone out there that wants to go to 3D, I would really highly suggest making a 3D game because you, you know, it's like anything else, you need the building blocks and when you get better 3D games, can't go big. Okay, so you want to title this Super Mario Pro and then you create a project, you put in any wants. Okay, listen, desktop. And create projects. Now you can see it's going to make a folder. Everything is loading. Okay. So, actually, let this down a little bit. Size it up. Size it up. So, what are you seeing here? All right. First thing you're seeing is the scene view. It's basically everything you create is going to go into the scene. And in a nutshell, scene is the level. The display, the game, is going to be showing you what you're making and how it functions. So scene is for building, 
game is worth seeing. Now, you also see that you have the assets. That's going to be your folder with, any, with everything you need. Animations, for creating animations, animator. It's, it's basically a, a blunt, not a blunt tree. It's a tree of all the actions that your character does, or your enemy, or your AI, or basically anything that needs animations. It's really useful, and I'll show you why very soon. Console, we're going to be looking at this a lot. It's basically everything that's going on in is being showed down here, all the, as far as the game engine aspects of it. All right, so let's get started. First thing we're going to need to do is make a lot of folders. Um, I like to keep my folders organized because it makes it easier to actually make the game if you have everything in one spot because if you have it cluttered it's not going to be well, useful for you okay so we'll call this art create a new folder we call this uh, pre uh, prefabs and prefabs is everything that you did to a game object that's saved and I'll show you that later prefabs folder scripts Scripts is what makes the game run. You can't have a game without scripts. Don't let RPG Maker uh, fool you on that. Okay, we've had scripts. We're also going to make materials. And new folder, mesh, folder, animator, good. Create new, one last folder, or not the last folder, animations, and new folder, levels. I don't know if I'm going to make the whole Super Mario Brothers. I know I'm going to make a World 1 1 for this tutorial because if you get the basis of how to make a Mario game, that's I think that's like the jump start to actually making your own video game. And if you're making your own video game while following my tutorial, that's perfectly fine too. I mean, it's all the same kind of function, except if you want to go through different art styles of uh, your sprite facing, which I did once. It's more pain. But if we ever get to a more complicated tutorial, I'll show you guys how to do that. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is import your sprites into the Unity game engine. And uh, like I said before, I'll provide all the links to the sprites so you can uh, actually get it. Okay, so you go to create, or I'm sorry, not create, import new assets. And you should go to, I gotta go to my desktop because I made Super Mario Bros. And you have two tile sets. One, it's the sprites for Super Mario Brothers. The other is the tile sets. Okay, I'm gonna import both of them. You have to import it one by one, but all right. Same thing. I don't know why you keep going to create creates anything. You import it again, and there you go. You have all your sprites into one place. So you may be asking, well, this is a giant sprite sheet full of a lot of Mario's. How do I split them up so they're useful? usable in the Unity engine. Well, I will show you, good sir. Okay, so you see here, this is the inspector. The inspector is basically everything you need to know for editing the sprites. So there's many different options, but we're gonna use sprites 2D and UI. So we're gonna use, then you go to single, multiple, six per unit, that's fine. I want, yeah, generate mini map, point no filter, true color, and then you press apply. Now your friend Mario is ready to go. So the next thing you need is to press the sprite editor. The sprite editor is basically Unity's way of cutting sprites out. So instead of actually going and doing it externally, Unity will help you. There's multiple ways to do it. There's slice automatic, by grid size, and by grid count. Automatic, it will automatically do 
the grid size, cell size will do by pixel and cell counts, kind of the same thing. Now, look at this sheet, how it's all crunched up. It's not really, not very, you know, good when it comes to, you're actually splitting automatic and I'll show you why. So we're gonna do automatic and slice. Look at that. That's that's a big issue. Although some of them come out well, some of them do not at all. Mainly the Luigi ones, but that's okay. Nothing else. Which is an issue. So or to undo this is control Z, just like anything else. Now instead of that, let's try by grid size. Doesn't do it. It splits everything by the grid of the the sheet. Now let's do by cell count. Nope, doesn't. All right. So when you have an encounter a problem like this, you actually do it manually. Manually. Control Z this. Control Z. Okay, we're back to normal. There's actually another way to split sprites, and that's actually to hover above the character and I'll create a square, just like that. And there you go. That is how you split it manually. As you can see, it makes a little square. Everything's good. You can rename it and redo the positions if it's not really aligned together. A big issue with this too is that it'll clip into other sprites animations. So you want to cut as close as possible so you don't have a little bit of Mario's foot kind of uh, showing up on the other animation. Um, you can rename this, but I'm not going to rename it since I since it'll show the images itself and I know how it kind of goes. All right, so let's see this for the next three. I'm going to cut it close as possible so feet don't come in to play because we don't want that. Other one? Because all right now we want is this walking and idle animations. One more. You see how when I did the box, it clipped into the big Mario's foot or Super Mario's foot and it cuts off his hand over there. Easy fix. Just align it to character. Like that. Possible. I'm kind of a perfectionist. I like to make this close so the right doesn't cut out into any other characters. All right. And uh, if you're into sprite cheating, if you're into pixel art, don't don't make sprite sheets like this. It's just cluttery and it's not very appealing. All right. After you're done with that, you press apply. And if you go back. You'll see, hey, look, it's Mario. It shows his walking animations. Just like that. Woo! Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is cut out this tile set for the first level. Now, let's look at what the first level has. World War One, World 1-1. One, one. Now, as you can see, it has the little round blocks, pipes, and bricks, and question, and you know, well, you know what that is, question mark blocks. Now, I counted all of this, and this has 200 tiles, uh, brick tiles on the top. So, that's something we're going to do, since we're going to make it as accurate as possible. So, we're going to go here. Oops, there we go. Same thing we did before, sprite 2D by multiple, by linear, no, no filter, compress, no, true color, apply. Perfect. Just like the original sprite editor we did for Mario, we're going to do another, we're going to split it all up again. Now, we have the same problem like we do with the original. Sprites with Mario as everything's cluttered together. 
But like anything else that can be fixed, that big of a what we're gonna do, take it over here. There you go. That's perfect. Now if we're gonna do this for one below, because if you remember in the original Mario, he jumps up to this before getting the flag post post. Down, down, there we go. I'm gonna do this for this one over here. Not that one. Actually, what we're gonna do is separate separate blocks. Or do the same. Let me check. Let me check. It's always good to look back on a level to see exactly what it is. Yeah, it's, you can see it's. There are two separate blocks. So what we're gonna do is split this in half, just like that. We're gonna do the same thing with this one. Oh no no. Oh, it's okay. Go down. Just like that. Perfect. Okay, now what else do we need? the question mark box here and the coins are important that's where Mario gets his power-ups right okay so what we're gonna need to do is... oops okay that's okay like I said if you make mistakes it's easy to fix here and do the next one perfect next one Uh, there we go. One more. And perfect. Okay. Next thing we need to do is the coins here. I'm going to get these coins over here. Probably you know. Everyone knows that these coins give us life to the Mario. Okay. Next. Oops, oops, oops. Those of you that. There we go. Now we to get these pipes. As we know, there's the pipes in Mario. That's how he warps. Oh, joke. Alrighty. Now, I think you may know this is why do these boxes have separate animation? Well, if you remember in the Mario game, when he presses the block, the block fades out to nothing. There's no more question mark. And you have to make a separate animation for that. Another thing that we're going to go over later on in the series after we do the player movement and scoring system and the AI. Okie doke. Press apply. And we're good. So if we are to go back, you see that all of the sprites are where they need to be. Oh, okay, you see that? That's a no no. That's when I was talking that's what I was talking about before when sprites they sometimes you don't cut it right and it shows up into another sprite art, which is exactly the case of this one. Let's readjust it again. Press apply. There you go. So now, so now everything's good. Everything's good with the world. Not Try that again. You'll notice one thing with game developing that you're going to make a lot of mistakes. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with making mistakes. That's how you learn. And the more mistakes you make, the better, as long as you fix it. Let's see what I can do. We're going to do that. 
make the boxes a little bit shorter so it doesn't collide with the question mark boxes. Okay. Now we can see that the coins are perfect. Nothing is colliding with each other. We have no issue. Okay. So you're asking yourself, all right, I cut all the sprites and they're ready to be used. So what do I do now? Well, my good sir, let me answer that. First, we're going to take this idle sprite here, drag it onto this, and we're going to rename this to press F2 to rename it player. And I'll tell you why later. Now, as you can see, uh, Mario's a little bit too small on that screen. What, what the heck is going on? Well, you see the camera's completely zoomed out. So I'll show you how to zoom it back in to see Mario. I'm not going to say this is going to be the, the camera that's going to be permanent because we're going to be right at cameras. But for now, for all testing purposes, we're going to zoom it in so we can see what we're doing. So now that we have our clam, ah, camera clicked in, what we're going to do is change the size of the background. So what we're going to do is change the size of the camera so we can see our friend Mario. What we're going to do is first actually we're going to drag this under the player so the camera always follows the player. And what we're going to do next is change the size so it actually closer to our friend the Mario. Oh. And there you go. We can see Mario now. And apparently I clipped it wrong, so we're going to go back over here real quick and fix it. Okay, let's go see Mario. Do this over here. There we go. Now that looks apply. That's what I said again. It's like when you're when you're actually doing the sprite sheets, don't don't clutter them like that. It doesn't doesn't do very well for people to actually put them in the game. Leave that real quick. Put that above. Don't do that. Don't do your target. There we go. All right, let's put that in again. There we go. 
everything is getting functioning order. Player, put the main camera down. So basically, the player became the the parent to the main camera, which is the child. All right. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna create Mario's animation. And in order to do that, you have to go to player, you have to add component, and go to miscellaneous, and you have to make an animator. An animator is basically the controller that makes sure the player does what he's supposed to do. And for example, if I were to press the right arrow key, Mario would be running right, which the animator would set it up to do. And we'll see plenty of that in action, well certainly. And then we're going to do another add component. And we're going to go to miscellaneous again. And animation, which is basically what these sprites are for. These sprites are for animation clips. Okay. So what do we do now? All right. We simply do this, do an animation, and then you create a crip, ah, a crip clip. And then you want to put it actually on your assets, but in your animations, uh, Older. We tile this to walking, if I can spell right, walking.animation. Press save. Now you'll see that you have an animation scene. Let's go to our project folder and go to art. Go to our friend Mario. As you can see here, he has three walking animations. And that's gonna play a vital role back in the day when they do more than three. Alright, so as you can see here, the there's a walking, that's our name, and their samples are sampled to the 60s. Now 60s would be our frames per second, and that's really important to know when you're doing animations. When it comes to samples, you have to judge how much sprites, sprite art there is to the character. So, say that I was making a 2D game that has 60 frames per second. Now, the art would have to have 60 frames. The art itself, like the movement, would need 60 frames. So, when the game plays, the, the game engine is checking each frame for 60 seconds. If that's the best way of playing good. Okay, so what you're gonna do is drag your Mario art and paste it. And I'll show you what 60 seconds what happens here. Now let's go see what happens to Mario. He runs very slow and we don't want that. But you can see here it's checking how many animations it's running. As you can see, that's kind of like the counter. All right, let's delete this. I just want to show you, for example. Okay, so instead of 60, we're going to put three frames per second. Right, like this. I'm going to take a Mario friend again. I'm going to put him need to be. Oops. Ooh, whoa, whoa. Nope. There we go. Now you're saying, why is he walking too slow? It's not, it doesn't look very fluid, does it? So let's stop that. So what we're gonna actually do instead of three, we're gonna six. So what we're gonna do, just like that, we're gonna keep him there. And you can see he's walking a bit faster because he's actually, they're running more frames to look up. So everything is going to go back in the loop. If I were to do like 10 seconds, frames, that looks a lot better. 
by eight. It looks a lot smoother. What you want to do is keep putting the samples higher or lower depending how fluid the animation is. Because I can guarantee you if you're making a game and the animations don't look very fluid, it's not going to be good on you. And we're done. Stop that because it looks good as it is. And we're going to go to the animator. As you can see, an animator has walking already, which entry is anything that goes on entry. Everything leads to entry and walking is the walking animation. Okay, so as you can see, animation has now a player, a player animator, which is going to be the thing controlling the player, while the animation is going to be the arts moving it. All right, so we're going to put this player actually in the animator fold folder right here. We're going to go to our player and link. Oh, that's okay. It's already linked. The animator is already linked to the player, so that's good. But animator. Let's talk about the animator. The animator is everything that is controlling the player within the engine. The best way I can say it is that Everything that happens with an engine, the animator is going to make it happen. You can't have an animator without the animation. Or you can't have the animation without the animator. That's basically the most important part when it comes to actually animating your character and Unity. Very useful tool. Okay, so we're going to go back to animation. We're going to make a new clip. And call it idle. Because when he's not standing around, he's not going to be walking. Idle enemy. And we're going to go to our project again. We're going to go to la 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 art and get our idle Mario. Now Mario doesn't have any animations when he's idling, so this is going to, just going to make it ten frames like the other animation. If we're going to play it. It's just going to loop. That's perfect. And we're done. Now, if you look here in the animator, whoa, we have a new idle animator. What does that do? And I'll show you very, very, very soon. We're going to set this as the default layer because when you're not moving, Mario's not going to move. And idle, idle and walking. There we go. We're going to go to idle, make transition to walking. Walking back to idle, and I'll show you what that does. So these arrows are basically transitioning points. So say that you were to press the right key, idle is going to go to walking until you stop pressing that key, then it's going to go back to idle. And I'll show you what that does. So now that we got all the animation done as far as animator animations for now we're going to animate our Mario into the scripting aspects of it but before we do that we need to add something to Mario so he can have a uh, physics to it to him so what we're gonna do go to physics 2d we're gonna go to rigid body 2d and for right now you don't need to mess with that Rigid body, rigid body 2D is basically the character physics. What makes the character move? The engine. But you may notice that right now, he's just playing his animation. Why? Because there's nothing set up for him to move and nothing to tell him when to stop and start. All the only thing that's going to happen is, let me just do not maximize play. As you can see, it's going to go to idle, walk idle, walk idle, walk idle, walk idle, like that, which uh, you don't want that. You want him to move as you press the keys. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a video game, would it? So, what do we do now? I shall show you. All right, so what we're going to need to do is after we make a rigid body, we're going to make a new Physics 2D and a box collider, which the box collider is basically, how do I explain this? 
All right, when you are walking on ground, you are colliding with that ground. But anything that touches the collider is something that the player or Mario is going to interact with. So, you actually press the watch collider over the coordinates. You can see that you can see the box around them. So now that we got that, we can actually put a player rehab script. So if we ever make any changes, we can save it. Okay. So what now? Now we're gonna go to the fun part of everything. We're gonna do a player movement script.